Okay, so I'm welcoming uh, Lee. So I know Lee as Lee Mac 147, but we might get to know Lee a bit more about that. Um, and, and welcome, really. This is episode two for anybody coming in and listening or watching this. It's episode two of uh, my comically named Talking Balls podcast. Uh, and it's really it's an accompaniment to the Snooker 19 PlayStation League. Um, and, and it's something that I want to encourage more people to get involved in if you'd like to. So, so I'm welcoming Lee in. And um, Lee, people will know you from obviously being in the league and you're in the Premier League and you're getting to cup finals. You, you're always high up on the centuries board and you've got quite a profile. But just tell us a little bit, if you would, Lee, just about how you got into this game in particular. You know, why did you join the league? Just tell us a bit about that background, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, I think, uh, you know, when I, I'm, a, I'm a snooker guy anyway, so, you know, when the game was coming out, I, w I was always going to buy it. And it was the same with the golf games, you know, I was always going to buy them. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how I, I fell into the league. But uh, I think it was just through the game somehow. I'm a bit of a technophobe. So, <laughs> so I must have stumbled across it some way. But, you know, it's been the best thing I've done in the last year and a half. Oh, fantastic. And, and that, that seems to chime. I think a few people have said in different chats that, especially with the pandemic and the lockdown, um, I know there's been some people saying that they've not worked, they've been on furlough. And, also, and this is something they've been able to still do when they almost can't get out of the house and it gives them something to keep them. I mean, you can wind away hours, can't you, doing this? Well, yeah, you can, and I have. <laughs> you know? um, and I'm actually a bit gutted that the furlough's over because uh, I was getting a lot of my games played during the day. Yeah. You know, it's at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely but, changes things up. Yeah, but it's, been, it's certainly been a, a godsend over the last year and a bit mm. with COVID and... Um, you know, I play a lot of snooker, you know, in real life, mm. and you miss the competitive edge to yeah. that. Yeah. And you, you miss just, uh, you know, playing a, a human being. And I know it's a game, but, you know, you still get the, the buzz and the thrill from playing these games. Yeah, definitely. It's real competition, isn't it? So I suppose it's that difference between playing on career mode, which is purely AI opponent. It's really a bit soulless in a way isn't it I mean it's fine to practice but you're actually competing with real people who want to beat you and you want to be them and, and I don't know about you but I mean certainly when we had the screen game on the weekend I actually really felt quite nervous um, and felt myself kind of seizing up at times when I was going for things and, and the accuracy wasn't there because you actually felt like you know you really wanted to perform. Yeah that basically playing you know, what you're talking about there is the equivalent of a twitch. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah. real life, that is the equivalent of a twitch. And, you know, I've done it myself. You know, I, I started off thinking, it's only a game. Mm. You know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And you're hitting that power bar every time. But, you know, when you get more into it, you played for a, a few months or whatever, you start missing that power bar. Mm. And that that's pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's real, isn't it? It's not... It's not made yes. up, it's, it's actually real. It really is proper pressure, it's funny. Um, and in terms of the game attack, so I asked Mike about this earlier and, and he kind of seemed to fall into his no guts game attack, but uh, I'll, I'll let people check out his podcast. Um, your one's Lee Mac 147, um, and it might be obvious where that's from, but I, I did wonder if you and Phil Mac 147 were twins, but I don't think you are, are you? Well, I asked the same question when I, <laughs> when I, still, when I seen Phil's name, but it uh, turns out, no, we're not. <laughs> How many one but listen, Phil, Phil's a great guy. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Why? No, no, no. Phil's no, a Phil. great guy. Uh, he's a great guy, and <laughs> and that's the thing about the the league as well. You know, it's it's a community, mm. and everybody's came together. Yeah. And in the last year and a half, uh, I feel like I've got another fifty friends. Yeah, yeah. So 40, 49 more friends than what I had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's something in common, isn't it? And, and uh, again, that's the point of doing this, really. So this will make you obviously more kind of, a, not approachable, that's the wrong way of putting it, but obviously people will identify with you in a different way just from seeing you on this, really. Um, yeah, and, and I it, think that's important. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah uh, and i think yeah the, i think for me that's what's exciting you know i like meeting people and i meet people in my job every day but this is a different it's a departure but um and actually some people have said they don't particularly want to be on camera so that's the other thing we you know we'll always offer out if people would rather just have a chat but not be on the camera you know we could do that as well and people can listen to it if they want to um yeah you know, you know, you'll do this. yeah yeah you know i was pretty much the same though michael i, I thought yeah, I, I want to put my face on this camera, and it, <laughs> and I thought, oh, and and then I thought, for what the guys have done in the league, I thought it's a small price to pay, and you know if it if it gets a, a little bit of connection with the rest of the players in the the community, then yeah, go for it. Yeah, super. No hats off to you for doing it, and I think it will do that, and we'll obviously. Yeah, we'll probably we'll put it out on the chat and we'll no doubt get some comments. But uh, yeah, thank you for doing it. Um, no, no problem. You touched on a bit. You touched on about your real snooker. So obviously, you know that you've got the game, but you do play a fair bit of snooker, and, and that sounds like an understatement. But will you let us in a little bit on on what you've been doing. I mean, you're not just a kind of go down the ex servicemen's club or the British Legion on a Sunday with some mild, are you? you you're actually a lot better than that. Yeah, well. You know, I've played since I was maybe eight years old, full-size tables since I was 13. Mm. And I've always loved the game. You know, I started watching it on television and, you know, I progressed to playing uh, national competitions. Right. So 2017, I was uh, Masters champion and Masters number one in the rankings. Wow. And 2017, now Masters is 40 plus. Right. You know, so, um, and I went on to play in European Championships, yeah. Uh, and really, it's been a blast. Wow. You know, as a as a snooker fan myself, mm. uh, you know, that's it's my life. Yeah, yeah. So, so will that come back more? You know, once we're more, you know, coming away from the pandemic, being able to mix a bit more travel, is that going to come back in again more? Yeah, absolutely. You know. Uh, in the in the Scottish scene, you know the amateur scene. They uh, we were playing the Masters. Uh, the pandemic kicked in, and we couldn't play last tournament. So, you know, once everything's back to normal, we'll get back to it, and it'll be a new season. And then, obviously, European Championships and stuff will kick off again, and hopefully, the ball will start rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Get get that. I, I suppose there's a risk of resting this, but I guess you're all in the same boat, to be honest. And I guess yeah. you'll be able to practice as well, won't you? Get a bit more practicing when you need to. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because actually tonight is the first night I'm going to the club. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, the, the club opens tonight, so this is my first game of snooker in a year. Wow. wow <laughs> so I'm looking fantastic. forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to put it out there and just see what you've come up with. And actually, it'll be interesting to people watching. Um, anybody notable that you've either played against or you've met through, you know, your sneaker career? Yeah, uh, obviously I've played Hendry. See, so you uh, say that, obviously I've played Hendry. Twice. <laughs> we have on computers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what, with the game, reality. Yeah, but with the game I was absolutely gutted that you could not choose Hendry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'll be good. You know, if they, if they if they bring out a new game, then surely because Henry's back in the tour, you'll be able to pick him as yeah, your player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The thumbs up. So play Henry, Dennis Taylor, um, like say Mike Dunn, the professional. Uh -huh. A lot of sort of lower rank professionals. Yeah, yeah. And stuff, but you know exhibitions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what do you make of them? I mean, you do you get a feel for what they're like as people, and you know, do you hear much about the scene in terms of the people we maybe see on TV but don't know as much? Yeah, do you know Hendry was pretty much aloof, really? <laughs> yeah, and I was a bit gutted with that because I'm a huge Stephen Hendry fan. Yeah, and Hendry was always my hero since yeah. he started being pro, and then I got a chance to play him, uh -huh. and. I played pretty well against him, and then after the match, he was like, so, so do you play a bit? Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I just felt he could have went a wee bit further. 
yeah. And uh, you remember Chris Small? Um, vaguely, yeah. I, I've missed a bit of a period of snooker, really, from the, end, the like, eight, late 80s into the early 90s. And then, oh, it's weird that this game has got me back into catching up now, but there's a whole period where I haven't really followed it as much, to be honest. But other people will know. Well, well, well uh, Chris Small, back in the early 2000s, won the LG Cup. Okay. And, and he had to retire because of his back. Oh. And uh, he was using magnets to try and solve his back problems. Whoa. But uh, ultimately, he had to retire. So they had a testimonial right. for Chris Ball, and all the big names were there. Henry Higgins, uh, Dennis Taylor, Willie Thorne. Uh -huh. And uh, we were at another table because we paid for a ticket, obviously. Yeah. We were at another table. And I says, I've got to go up to Stephen. I'd already played him by this time. Right. And... I said to him, I says, do you remember the game we played? Ah, oh, sorry, I don't remember oh. the games I play and stuff like that. Yeah. But the guy next to him says, well, he should, because he beat you by about 115 points. Oh, and it was, really? guy, it was a guy that was comparing on that night, who is a guy that writes for the, the Mirror, uh -huh. one of the papers, but uh, he says, well, he should. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, he's... I've seen him a few times, but he, he never remembers. <laughs> no, no. I Is suppose he, he plays that many exhibitions. Yeah, they say, don't they, about meeting your heroes, but I guess it's better to kind of meet them and get that feel for who they really are as, and be there close and, and not just yeah. see them from a distance. It's quite interesting to get that close, isn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong, he, he was a perfect gentleman. Right. But um, he was... I, I don't know. It, it seems in his Instagrams now and stuff like that that he's so down to earth. Yeah. And and I suppose when I met him, he was sort of still on tour. He was still a winner. Right. Right. Uh, but you know, he was he was a perfect gentleman. Yeah. 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 He comes across quite relaxed, doesn't he? Now, because um, I, I kind of I do the audible thing with the audio books, and I listen to his book uh, earlier in the year, well, the end of last year, and he came across then I think as being well, you could see how intense he was and how competitive and how almost, if anything didn't go for him, he'd almost lock himself away and find it really hard to deal with. Um, and what, what about you? How do you deal with, you know, uh, I'm sure that you've got your own ways. I mean, are you, are you a good, it's not, not such thing as a good loser, but how, what's your temperament like in terms of in the real snooker before we go back to the game again? Well, just to pick up on what you were saying, I'm a terrible loser. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm a terrible loser. I suppose that's what makes you a good winner. Mm, mm. You know, but um you know, I don't I don't like losing, you know, in real snooker or this game, mm. you know, I don't like losing. But um you know, I project very much uh that's not it's not bothering me vibe. Right, right. <laughs> when when inside I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, don't give anything away. I exactly uh, because I think if if you're playing somebody and they're picking up and all of that, then you're you're probably half beaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might start taking liberties a bit, might they? Open up a bit, thinking you're half beat. Exactly. <laughs> and and how does it compare then? So obviously, you know, this is a game that we're talking about, but um, as opposed to really doing it, but. Are there many things you can take across from your experience as a player and as a good player at a good standard into a game? Obviously, there's things about angles, there's things about, I mean, whether you feel the ball's reacting the similar way that you'd expect them to for real. I mean, how do you feel about the reality of it and, and how your own experience helps you in the game? Oh, uh, huge. Absolutely huge. You know, I, I'm looking at the table on the screen and I know I know what shot to play. Mm. Obviously, it's just executing that shot. And obviously, the games it's a bit. You know, it's uh, you play different shots because you can't just play your right back to bulk if you're playing a safety shot. Right. So you know, because you might leave a pot on. Sometimes you've got to roll up mm. Mm. because they will put a long ball if you leave them it on. Yeah. But certainly with the tactics of the game. I find that, you know, my experience with playing snooker mm. has helped me in this game, right. definitely. 
definitely. Do you think you have a similar style? I mean, I've noticed from some of the players and the more I watch the top players or come across them on a one frame thing online, you realise just how aggressive many of them are. And it's almost you leave anything remotely even on the break and you're dead uh, a lot of the time, which which it, maybe that happens more in real life. But it feels like it's more often it seems to happen like that. But uh, um, is your style similar to your normal style outside of the game? No. No, I'm I'm more aggressive in the game, right? Ra- rather than real life, you know. But but at the same time, you know, playing those safety shots, and in, in real life, you would open the pack up and play it right back to bulk. Yeah. But in this game, you keep the pack tight. Yeah, yeah. Be- yeah. Because you leave a ball out, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know, all th- sorry, sorry. All no. the all the guys down the leagues, you know. Uh, they're all great players that can make century breaks and stuff in the game and you leave them a ball and it's probably game over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite scary. I guess, and I guess, the, I guess the higher you get, I mean, I've already just started, so I'm in League 3. But there's some good guys who clearly shouldn't be in League 3 who are in there who are too good for that, but that's fine. And you learn yeah. against them. I mean, for me, I'm probably a bit more cautious and I've been told that I'm a percentages player. And I probably am because I haven't got yet to the experience level of being able to be confident about breaking the reds up and moving around them. And, and often I'm leaving the pack untouched and then I'm picking them off with 30s and 40s. And occasionally yeah. then I'm seizing on a mistake and getting a bigger one. But but I think that will come and open up more with just more confidence with it. But you, yeah, must of course. Find, you, you must find in your level, or you must find in your level where you must have very quick frames as well, where you're almost, ah, oh, just left that there. He's got it. I'm gone. 10 minutes, we've had the frame. You must get yeah, way. yeah. Do you know what I'm? Um, you know, if you're playing like guys like Mace, mm. uh, Chef, you know that, that I'm playing Mace Friday night. Yeah. You play guys like those. You you leave them on. You go and make a coffee. <laughs> yeah. you come back and you, you hope to finish the frame, mm. just so you can get on with the next frame. You know, yeah. it's it's that brutal in the yeah. Premier League. These guys are are brilliant. If you leave them a shot. Mm. It's, it's game over. Yeah. yeah. And it teaches you to be the same way, have mm. the same mindset. You know, it's uh, it's tough. It yeah. really is tough. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess it would be interesting. I mean, you, you said about your current season and obviously on Friday. Is that the Masters final? Is it? You've got a final on coming up, haven't you? Yeah, Masters final against Mace. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, it's Friday night of... I think uh, Michael has said it's Friday night. Mm. Uh, just, just looking for confirmation for that. But yeah. you know, uh, it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, yeah, it could go either way. I guess, couldn't it? I suppose. Is that? Are you feeling confident? I guess it's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I always feel confident. You know, I feel that if I get my chance, mm. then I can finish the frame. Yeah. Uh, but. You know, there's a lot of pressure on not to leave Mason. Yeah. Because yeah. he will finish the frame. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. It's basically 50-50. Whoever gets the chance mm. will probably win the frame. Yeah, it's almost like a shootout in a way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Less of a kind of, less of a lot of strategic kind of 20 minutes just moving around the table and more one, one false move and you're you toast. That's right. The, the, the only thing I can hope for, if Mace gets in and leaves the selling angle on the black to split the pack, that red goes in when he splits the pack. Yeah, That's yeah. the only thing I can hope for. Because yeah. if he splits the pack and gets on the red, it's game over. Right. Yeah. 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 A lot of people do that, don't they? Straight off the, the bottom and the, the black and the straight in the pack. There's no mucking Yeah. Back. As soon yeah. as you can get that pack open. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's cool. It's, it's it's good to see actually where you need to get to to to, to play any higher really, and uh, obviously the flat, the higher you get, the more merciless the opponents are. So that will open oh, your game up. Um, yeah, absolutely. And in terms of you know where you where where you see the future of the game, I mean, it sounds like you you welcome what's going on at the moment, where they're obviously starting to do some you know almost live streaming and commentating on finals and you know the the, the the YouTube videos there's obviously looking to make it much more sticky and inclusive really for either existing players but also for new people looking in going well that sounds interesting and seeing this whole 
website with stats and data and content. I mean, it's getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm a stats man. I love looking through stats and stuff. So, you know, as I said before, and I've, I've messaged the guys, what, what they're doing is second to none. You know, they put a lot of time and effort in it, and I would love to use this video as a, as a way to say thanks to them, you know, for what they do, and thanks to all the players that play, because yeah. um, without the players, obviously, you've got no games. But, you know, the time and effort they put in it is, is second to none, and uh, they deserve to be, you know, lauded for that. Yeah. Yeah, quite agree, quite agree. And, that, and yeah. that's inspired these conversations. So, yeah, yeah you, you, almost, exactly. you almost just want to compliment it and just keep keep that interest going. So it's, Do, you, do cool. you know when I see the messages, when I see some of the messages uh, on WhatsApp and uh, I see guys being a bit disrespectful, mm. I feel that I've got to put a message in to say, look, guys, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep it up because... Um, they need more good messages than bad yeah. messages. And I, for one, really appreciate what they're doing. Yeah. You know, and it's been a lifeline to me for the last year and a bit. And I'm yeah. sure it has, I should have speak for everybody. Yeah. You know, during yeah. lockdown. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. 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 I've, I've, I've heard just informally on some of the WhatsApps, people saying stuff like that. Just how, how they've almost, that's, yeah, as you say, it's a lifeline. And there's some really interesting stories. I mean, I'm hoping that's where, this will go and you you being on here will encourage other people to come forward and say yeah I'll have a chat with you no problem um because there's yeah, some really so. interesting things yeah yeah i'm going to go into just we're kind of into the the final you know we're almost on the pink now really so uh if i go into a quick fire just a, a bit of a I'm giving you two choices your preference and it might be the answer is no but i'll let you see it's just a it's a standard set of questions uh um, yeah so my first one is is star wars or star trek Ooh, or, or neither Star Trek. Well, oh, okay. well, well. I didn't know neither was on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll if say had, neither. If you had to go with Star Trek, but actually not not too bothered. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, this is maybe about style as opposed to um, ability or whatever. But Thorburn or Alex Higgins? Thorburn. Thorburn. Ah, the grand Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was never a fan of Alex Higgins. Right. On, only because he was rude. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Thorburn, uh, uh, he was my favourite player until Stephen Hendrick came along. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's class, so, isn't it? Definitely Thorburn. Oh, okay. Good answer. Yeah. Interesting that. I'm um, not a Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, the man can play, but yeah, it's a different, very different personality, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, cat or dog? Simple one, really, that one. Oh, that's cat. Dog. Cat? You got some cats? Yeah, yeah, got two. Okay, what are the names? Uh, well, it's funny, uh, Magnum and Blue Steel. Uh, <laughs> okay. Zoolander. Yeah, yeah, oh, very good. Uh, do they wear, like, the, the, big, the big outfits, do they? Yeah, yeah, still looking for the third cat, so we can call him La Tigra. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, I look forward to that. Uh, New York or New Zealand? Never been to either, but I would say New York. Okay. City, city v. country in a way, that one. Um, yeah, and, and, and finally, fish and chips or posh meal out? Mm, posh meal out because I don't like fish. <laughs> oh, okay. Unless yeah. it's tuna in a tin. So I would have yeah. to say posh meal out so I could pick. Yeah, well, fair point, fair point. Um, well, great, you know, so, I mean, that's kind of wrapping it up, really. I just wanted to be able to, you know, A, find out for myself a bit more, but really it's for everyone in the group and in the chat to get to know more about one of the colleagues and also really interesting to hear more about the real snooker and your exploits at that level. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how many of us in the group have played people like Stephen Hendry or played at the level you have. So it's really fascinating to, to know more about that, you know. Um, and what we'll do is, as I said, you know, we're, we're going to invite anybody who wants to come forward, just have a chat, you know, fairly informal, quite light, um, you know, and we'll do it as much as people want to do it and just put it out there and see how it goes. So um, any, any last words, really, Lee, before we go? 
Well, you know, I touched on it earlier on. I just want to thank the powers that be for, you know, what they've done. Uh, certainly for me in the last year and a half, you know, I'm a snooker guy. I love playing with snooker. I've not been able to play the snooker. This game has given me a chance to feel what it would be like to play snooker. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say that the community that we're involved in, we've got the, the crap out. And everybody is absolutely fantastic. They're polite, they're lovely, and it's a pleasure to play everybody, you know. And I just want to thank you all for, for being here for me in the last year and a bit. Brilliant. And, brilliant. and long may it continue. Quite agree. No, thank you. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's a good message. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, more people will engage and keep that community feel going because it sounds like it does a lot for people you know oh, yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> all right thanks a lot then lee and um take care best of luck on friday thanks very much michael <laughs> it's been a pleasure to speak to you and you take care